welcome back to Yellow Card Vanguard. I'm your host, Toku, from It's Toku TV on Twitch. It has been a long while, and Clan Collection 5 and 6 have already been out for quite some time, but I figured this is going to be a mainstay of the channel, so I've taken some time out of my failing job search to give you, the viewers, what you want. My based Red Pill and Giga Chad takes on the new cards and supports for Clan Collections 5 and 6. Once again, we need to preface the video as well as the rest of the series by letting you know that these lists are made at face value using my skills of card evaluation. They will need playtesting to fine tune, but I hope they will serve as a good reference point for filthy net deckers to piggyback off of. Welcome back to Clan Collection Cores. Shadow Paladin, another clan that has had its primary identity change due to restriction list, primarily overrepresented by Luard, Revengers has now taken the forefront, and for God's sake I'd hope so after this much support in the last few clan collection. Let's take a look at if these new Shadow Paladin cards shake up the clan. This time around, we also got the unfortunate 3 new grade 3s, so instead of going through all the new cards and then showing the list, I'll show a list off and give a brief rundown after each new grade 3. One of the new grade 3s in Origin Mage Ildona. While in the deck or the drop zone, Ildona loses 2 grades, essentially becoming a grade 1. It also has an in-hand skill that while your vanguard is grade 1, you can discard him to reveal 10 cards from the top of your deck, and if you reveal 2 or more grade 1s, you can add a grade 2 or greater hand from among them and put them into your hand. Finally, on the vanguard circle or the rearguard circle, when it attacks, you can counter blast one and retire two other rearguards and draw two cards. And if you're on the vanguard circle when you do this, it gains 5k until the end of battle for each grade 1 card in drop. The key points towards this new card are the first two effects. Let's start with the second effect. In a sense, this can somewhat replace your grade 3 tutors in Branwyn, letting you pay an upfront cost rather than a backloaded cost, but letting you tutor for grade 2s as well as grade 3. Then its first effect, it becomes a grade 1 in drop and deck. This is important for not only its own effect, but gives you some good interaction with other cards. Let's review the core I presented here and talk about the role Ildona plays here. So, I think Ildona plays best in Luar due to a unique interaction it has with Nightmare Painter. Because Ildona counts as a grade 3 in Soul, but a grade 1 in Drop, you can use Nightmare Painter to put Ildona into Soul, and when you stride into Drag Driver, your grade 1 rearguards will already have that crit on your first grade 3 turn. Furthermore, you notice that we've cut down on Branwyn since Ildona in hand acts as a similar substitute for those cards while also speeding us up to our for two regards. Since this most recent banless restriction update that I'm recording this on, we do now have access to Karon back again, which might be a very large a difference maker in how Luard fares compared to Revengers. Our endgame falls back to Apocalypse Bat plus Morphessor board resets to get our four attacks with base two crit. With Nightmare Painters now being more in demand for the deck, it is very important to know how to cycle your pieces properly to be able to maintain that. In a same sense, because your first Nightmare Painter will be used to actually push an Eldona into Soul rather than a Bat, it might be better to actually play the large 20k attacker in Strict Order Knight Luwalis. Let's take a look at another new grade 3, Revenger Drag Ruler Phantom. When placed on the Vanguard Circle when riding from a Revenger unit, during the Ride Phase, search your deck for up to one Revenger and call it to Rear Circle. Then, if your opponent is at 4 or less damage, Soul Blast a Mordred Phantom and ping 1. Then, when Drag Ruler Phantom attacks, Counter Blast 1, Soul Blast 1, choose all your front row units with your Avenger or Blaster Dark in their name and retire everything else and give 5k to the front row for each unit retired. If you retire 2 or more, stand all of your front row rearguards. Quite literally another Mordred clone for Shadow Paladins when it comes down to it. Drag Ruler Phantom is just another Blaster Dark Restander that gives either 10 to 15k depending on what our back row looks like. I think the main difference is the plus one on Ride as well as the ping one, making each of the five attacks lethal if this hits your opponent to five. I appreciate that although the first effect incentivizes you to ride over Mordred, you still get a free plus one from riding into it from grade two to grade three. The second effect not being restricted to your opponent being a grade 3 also puts a lot of good early game pressure, which is good to see. Though it being restricted to the right phase cuts it off from any raging form lines unfortunately. I personally don't think a Drag Ruler Phantom is better than Raging Form decks, but being able to ride on the laurels of good Revenger support can definitely make it seem so. 
If you have spare Mortar Phantoms and its support, this would be a good place to shove it into. Here's what a sample core would look like. A few things to highlight, because Drag Roller Phantom doesn't care about the retires, we've chosen to add in the mains as a way to get free bodies for the retire. Alongside the mains, we run a small Blaster Dark support line in Dump Hood and a new promo in Gulmark, both 5Ks that help get Blaster Dark into rotation. While this list shows Rukea and Rakea, since Rukea can search out the Grey One Masquerade, which can convert into Blaster Dark, Tartu and Rinnell are obvious side options as well. Rinnell being an on hit or boost to get the check 3 makes him a great attacker on Drag Ruler turns, giving you 2 chances of its on hit. We can also run Abyssal Owl as another domain target. Once we both hit Grade 3, a single domain can lead us to 3 retired targets for that 15k front row buff. The main into Abyssal, into a draw, and whatever we drew can be sacked off for a Drag Ruler Phantom. Finally, let's take a look at our last new Shadow Paladin card. Which of Cursed Talisman attain? When this Vanguard is attacked, or when you put this card in the Guardian Circle, you can retire two Witch Rearguards and choose an opponent's standing rearguard to retire it. Then on the Rearguard Circle, if your Vanguard is a Witch, it cannot be chosen by card effects. It gains Intercept and a permanent 5k. Honestly, if it weren't for the fact that this card is restricted to strictly Witches, this would probably be pretty good in Shadow Paladin Index. But, because Witches are pretty shit, this card ends up being shit. I think it's cute that its existence on board as an 18k attacker, but also a threat when you intercept with it, is something cool that witches do that not any other Shadow Paladin deck can, so for that, I can appreciate it. Let's take a look at the core that I presented. First to note is, God bless Nemain is a witch. This lets us do the one Hyrule thing that Shadow Pal is capable of, and that is the Phantom Blaster Dragon Ride Skip with Dumplet and Bendy, who is coincidentally also a witch. Some things to note about our list, because we run a lot of cards that Soul Blast between Fem, the Phantom Blaster Dragon Ride Skip, Abyssal Owls, we wanted some Soul Charge, so I ran the Failed at two copies as the main targets for some Soul Charge. But also, it's a free rearguard to retire Profiana's skill. We can happen to win through grinding our opponent out of rearguards, then hopefully we can win with the Danger Lunge. Yeah, this is pretty copium, and also that new Grade 1 Witch, Dana. Yeah, it's another promo that we just recently got that was required for this deck to even have a semblance of playability. You want to use her to fill your opponent's board with grade zeros. That way, Fem is guaranteed the extra drive. As for some final words, despite getting Charon back, I think Luard players are still trying to find their wings again. And although Odona helps in accelerating its gameplay by a turn, we still need to find a way to balance the resource engine and finding the best new win con. Meanwhile, though Revengers got a new boss unit in Drag Ruler, it didn't support the current best way to play the deck in Raging form. And which is? Yeah, which is. In any case, that's it from me for this episode of Clan Collection Cores. Be sure to subscribe to the channel for more content like this and leave a comment down below because every little bit helps. This has been Toku from Yellow Card Vanguard. Toku out.